Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. ThinkTech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And for viewers out there who are watching us live, you may email us questions during the show at questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Today, I am excited to introduce the owner of Stargazers of Hawaii, which is our show title. So we have Nick Bradley, astronomer slash owner of Stargazers of Hawaii. Nick, welcome to the show. Hi, Kathleen. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so tell our viewers about yourself. Yeah, I, I'm born and raised in Honolulu and um, I went to high school at Midpac and uh, University of Hawaii, my degrees in uh, electrical engineering, but I've been, uh, uh, astronomy has been a hobby for, of mine for about 25 years. It's really fun. And um, I, after college, I worked in construction for about 10 years as a project manager and estimator. And uh, after a while, that kind of got tiring. So we decided to try and uh, make the hobby into a business. And uh, it's been about three years now, and we're just having so much fun. I love that. So you mentioned that it did start out as a hobby. How did that hobby even come about? Like what piqued your interest when it comes to astronomy and the study of constellations and stars and planets and everything outside of you know our little world or Earth, I guess? Yeah, I just started as curiosity, man. I want to know what's out there. Uh, started with a, a little book on constellations. Just go outside, match up the stars to the constellations. I uh, had a little pair of binoculars. Look up, look around the sky, see what these little uh, dots in the sky are. And, um, and I just had to find out more. So I uh, finally went to the Bishop Museum Planetarium, found out there's a uh, a local astronomy club called the uh, Hawaiian Astronomical Society. Went to the, one of their public uh, events out at Dillingham Airfield where everybody brings out their big telescopes. You look through it, you see amazing things. And from then I've just been hooked. It's like, what's out there? I wanna see galaxies, I wanna see comets, anything crazy, uh, I, I'm up for it. That's amazing. And you started out as a like that entire roster of experiences that you just mentioned that started at a young age. Is that correct? Yeah, about middle school. And uh, that's when I just started to get interested in science. Uh, luckily, I had a, a very fun teacher in middle school, he really uh, pushed science and I just got hooked. And it was just so fascinating to me. And uh, it's just been um, still learning about it and it's just been fun since then okay so let's talk about stargazers of hawaii then which is your business so let's pull up the logo nick tell us about stargazers of hawaii how did you even come up with a name kind of obvious but walk us through the process yes yeah so it's kind of off on a whim and i was kind of thinking when i was working in construction i've had some other friends and co-workers tell me it's like man you should do this as a business and uh, i was quite hesitant until we had an event at royal hawaiian center for the blood moon and um, my friend who hired me he needed a second telescope to help out with the event unfortunately he got sick so i had to go to his pop his place grab his telescope, find somebody to help me. And um, our picture of the blood moon got featured on the news. And it was so fun that uh, I registered my own business and haven't looked back. So what we love to do is of course, share the universe with our guests. Um, we do public and private stargazing shows with our large telescopes. We have two so far, one seven foot telescope and another um, eight foot telescope and we just look at amazing things in the sky the moon the planets star clusters galaxies nebulas and we just tell a lot of stories answer a lot of questions it's you find that so many people are interested in space it, it's so exciting to hear people um tell me their stories back and we just have fun um sharing the night sky with everyone 
I love that. Let's pull up that photo of the blood moon, which you mentioned earlier before the show was in November. So to recap, I know this was all over the news. What is a blood moon and, and how did you capture that photo? Yeah, so the last blood moon, this is also known as a lunar eclipse. So the last one was in November and of uh, the moon turns red because as the moon goes into Earth's shadow, it starts to get dark. And what's happening is the lights, the sunlight goes through Earth's atmosphere and gets projected onto the moon. So they say if you're on the moon looking back at the Earth, you're going to see a red ring around the Earth. That's all the sunrises and all the sunsets happening on Earth at the same time. So Kathleen, when you go to the moon, you let me know how that looks. I, I feel like between the both of us, you may be, have a better chance <laughs> as far as going to the moon goes. Um, you did mention rings, though. So let's pull up that fifth photo of Saturn. Was that taken? Well, how was that photo taken? Yeah, so similar like the, um, the blood moon, it was taken just putting the phone next to the eyepiece of the telescope. Saturn was a little different. This is the best picture I've ever taken. And Saturn is the most amazing thing to see in the night sky through a telescope, hands down. Uh, I've had customers cry from the first time looking at Saturn. It never gets old. And this picture in particular, uh, I took before I started a business and it took me about half an hour just to get this one decent photo. I haven't had a better picture since, but it was uh, zoomed in at 400 magnification and I took about two dozen photos, only one came out, and I'm very happy that it came out. I think that that is so awesome. Like, I don't have a photo of Saturn, so it's great <laughs> that you are able to show that to, you know, myself and whoever else is watching the show. Um, let's pull up the first photo. This was at Yokohama Bay. What's going on there? It's, it's very pretty, but there seems to be a lot of, there's a lot going on. Right. First yes. off, it's just a pretty sky, but tell us more about what we're looking at. Yeah, this is uh, kind of a signature photo of mine. This is the Milky Way. Uh, the, milk, the sky doesn't look blue. It's uh, kind of photoshopped for artistic reasons. But that's me in the foreground with our giant telescope. Uh, I had a friend photographer that wanted to do uh, a photo shoot with the Jeep and the uh, silhouette of the Jeep with the Milky Way. And we were out at Yokohama Bay a couple of years ago. Sky cleared up for us, and it, that picture just came amazing. So we actually had to stand there for 30 seconds as the camera took the exposure. But man, it's uh, I, I just love that one. <laughs> it, it it just it looks so nice. Can you see that type of sky from anywhere on Oahu, or do you have to be in specific spots to be able to capture like that? amazing of an image yeah so name of the game if you want uh, a lot of stars is to get out of the city away from the lights uh waikiki of course has a lot of light pollution so we went to yokohama bay i've also been to uh, north shore kahuku and each place there's no one best place just get out of the city uh so it's dark but also make sure you're safe too you don't want to go to any uh, unsafe places uh, by yourself, make sure you have somebody with you. And it's going to be dark, so make sure you actually have some light so you, um, you're safe. But this is what you see in the summer. So the Milky Way is visible uh, in the summertime, uh, the thickest part of it, because we're looking into the center of the galaxy. Um, the winter section of the Milky Way is a dimmer section just because we're looking out of the galaxy, so we see less stars. But if you want to see the full brunt of the Milky Way in the summer, it's, uh, it's a great, for, great date night uh, idea. <laughs> it's great that you brought that up because I remember you, you had mentioned that when we were talking uh, before the show, like a week or two ago. Are there certain seasons that are best to see certain things in the sky? Yes, so each season actually has its own highlights. Summer, of course, you get the bright Milky Way. Winter, you see a lot of uh, bright stars like Orion, Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, a lot of star clusters. Um, in the spring and fall, you actually see a lot of galaxies. And uh, coming up in the spring, you see hundreds and hundreds of galaxies 
But for that, you need to really get out into the dark sky. Um, the other things to look out for are the planets. So the planets have their own motion. They're not the same uh, timing every single uh, year. The stars are fixed, so they don't change throughout the year. But the planets move from um, not really season to season, but depending on their orbit. So the this morning, if you look in the morning about 5 a.m., you're going to see Venus, Saturn, and Mars all in the morning sky. And if you watch it day by day, the planets actually shift uh, against the background stars and move away from each other. And Saturn comes back um, in the early evening sky, starting from September through December is uh, the next great window for that. So look out for that. We're hoping to have uh, events looking at Saturn for the public. That, that is good to know. So to recap, you're, you're back to basics refresher. Planets move, stars don't. Did I get that right? Correct. Because so that means planets, constellations are out all year. Correct. Yes. So the planets uh, means wanderer in Greek. So they wander throughout the sky. So that's Ooh. exactly what they do. And also uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the moon. The moon also moves around. So uh, of course, we all know uh, one month is one moon phase cycle. They actually used to call one month one moon just because it revolves our 30 day month revolves around the 29 and a half day moon phase cycle. Um, so that's why we only have one full moon. If you have per month, you see two full moons in a month, we call it once in a blue, blue moon, right? Okay, so a Go back to that, Nick. So the description yes. of a blue moon is a full moon that happens the second time in a month? Yes. So usually okay. it happens on months with 31 days. I believe the last one was um, uh, in Halloween. So they had a full moon on October 1st and another full moon on the 31st. And so that second one is called the blue moon. There's a, another definition. You can also have four, moon, four full moons in one three-month period. And that's another definition for a blue moon. So you might see that yeah, um, in articles as well. So it has nothing to do with the color, kind of like how blood moon is has that reddish hue. Blue moon is just why, yeah, why just okay. the name, just kind of a name that, that fits and it's poetic. So it's stuck. Got it. And when it comes to weather, are people still able to see clearly in the night sky, even when it rains? Uh, of course not, obviously. Um, so weather is the most difficult thing for us to um, uh, predict and to kind of work around. Um, so we try to avoid areas like Kaneohe and Kalua just because it has heavy cloud cover and it's unpredictable. Um, but if anybody is, is in those areas, we'll still try. But you just got to be aware that you may have to cancel just because of uh, uh, weather. Um, other parts of the island have less we um, less clouds, like leeward side. So it's always usually a good place to observe. So um, yeah, we always check the weather forecasts, make sure where uh, we have good weather for our events. Okay, well, Nick, we are going to go on a break, but when we return, we'll delve into more questions on the business side um, and how you are making a business and then thriving in it when it comes to stargazing. So we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. Our guest for today is Nick Bradley, astronomer, owner of Stargazers of Hawaii. Nick, I mentioned that I um, I did have a favorite photo from the ones that you sent over. So if we could pull up that T-Rex one. <laughs> <laughs> I really just like it. So tell us about that. Like what, what is the, tell us the context of this photo. Yeah, we I had a, a family um, event with just before Halloween and uh, they wanted a photo in their Halloween costume. So uh, they, they put on their T-Rex photo and of course we got to aim it at the moon to make it a little more uh a little more fun and yeah that's basically we, we actually had one more costume someone had a bear costume uh, on the side that we um didn't make it into this one but yeah that was a fun <laughs> darn it that's okay <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll find that that bear photo somewhere uh and then you did mention that you hold private and public events what is or what have you discovered is the typical typical demographic for your business yeah, we, we, it kind of runs the gamut. We have locals, we have tourists, um, any, uh, all ages. This is uh, a universal um, uh, thing that we do. Looking up in the sky, everyone does it. Everyone's curious, what's up there? I get so many questions. Hey, what's this star in the sky? Where's the moon? And so it's for anybody and it's uh, so ingrained in us that we, we all know uh, what the stars are and everything like us. And I'm sorry, what was your other question? <laughs> we'll get there. Actually, let's do it right now. <laughs> what are some challenges that you have encountered so far in running a business that involves stargazing, that involves a particular time of the day, which is nighttime? Um, and second part to that is how did or has COVID-19 affected your business? Yeah, so basically, we do. We only can work at night, uh, of course. So our best shows were when uh, right after sunset. And since people don't stay up too late, we only have about two or three hour window uh, to do our events. And the hardest part is just getting the word out that uh, we do this uh, service. A lot of people think Oahu has a lot of light pollution and you can't do any stargazing shows. I have a lot of stargazing shows on the Maui and the Big Island, the other islands. But if you know what you're doing, um, Oahu is also a great place. Uh, you don't need a super dark sky to see just the moon and the planets. You can see the moon and the planets in the middle of New York City if you know where to look. And so uh, basically I've never had a business until this. So uh, my challenges were just what, how do I run the business? What do I do? How do I get my name out without spending a lot of money? So did a lot of networking and uh, did some events just before the pandemic at some, uh, we're at some malls gaining some um, momentum and then the world changed. And we kind of just had to sit tight and basically, uh, basically just keep the business alive and survive and while still trying to network, plant a lot of seeds with a lot of hotels, venues, and just to get our name out. And since everything's starting to open up, now everybody's ready to do things, everybody's ready to get outside, and we're starting to get very busy. I love that. I'm, I'm looking forward to going to one of your events. So I'll, I'll ask that after I ask this question. What are some interesting experiences that you've encountered during your events, public and private? Yeah, I would say one of the most memorable um, things that happened during one of our private events is we had somebody propose to their girlfriend and uh, the person uh, uh, approached me about it. And so we had some code words to time it right when she was looking at the looking through the telescope. Um, the guy uh, knelt down while she was looking. I had a camera ready and uh, with the flashlight on. And when she turned around, he proposed right when uh, the sky was clear and full of stars. So that's been one of my most memorable um, experiences with uh, the public. Great timing and coordination between <laughs> you and your clients. That's awesome. Um, I, I had another question. Okay, got it. <laughs> Completely <laughs> forgot about it because I was, I, I was mesmerized by your story because I was thinking about 
the logistics that came with it. Walk yeah. us through the process of, you know, your events. Um, and especially with, you know, COVID-19 precautions, even though the we kind of been a bit more lenient when it comes to certain mandates, how does that affect your business? Yeah, so we're always about safety. Uh, I come from a construction background, so safety is uh, heavy on, on me too. So um, during the pandemic, we made sure everything's wiped down, uh, sanitizer, mask, everything. As soon as the vaccine came out, I got it. And basically just because I deal with a lot of people and some of our bigger events, it can have about 200 people come out uh, when we do the big free public events at some of the malls. Uh, private shows, we can be a little more careful, keep it to a small group. Uh, no more than 10 or 20 or whatever the uh, current uh, guidelines allow. And so it, safety was our number one um, uh, our point then, yes. So what can one expect when they go to the event? Like, let's say you have something over, as you mentioned, at Royal Hawaiian or International Marketplace. Um, what, like, how, would I, how would I go about and partaking in the wonders of the telescopes. <laughs> yeah, so for our, our Royal Hawaiian events, we're going to be there at once a month looking at the moon um, until the planets come back in the fall. So Saturn comes back in the fall again, and we'll switch from looking at the moon at Saturn. And those are free, open to the public. Uh, currently, we're on the fourth floor of Building A, and you just show up. Uh, usually, we have a long line. And you stand in line as everybody goes through looking at the telescope. And if we have the moon, we're looking at the moon, bring your phone because we'll take a photo with your phone uh, of the moon. Basically, somebody, after they look through the telescope, they hand me their phone and I'll take a picture of the moon for them. Something to take home. Um, some of our more private events like International Marketplace, uh, we have tickets on sale uh, where at the International Marketplace twice a week the second and fourth Wednesday for the rest of the year. And those are more toward the private um, type uh, of events as we, we only allow about 20 people and we do a full tour of the skies. Uh, we we'll give you a guided tour of the stars and the constellations, tell more stories. And with the telescope, we'll look at many objects besides just the moon. So we'll also look at star clusters, galaxies, and and um, guests that come can also ask me more questions and we'll get into more detail compared to our larger groups that we only can uh, ask maybe one or two questions and then we have to move on to the next person. Great, Nick, did we cover all the um, upcoming events or were there more that I- yeah. had to I'd love to share a couple of uh, more. There's a couple of more blood moons happening this month, May 15th. Um, in Hawaii, it's already gonna be halfway more than halfway through the event but as it rises on the east side of the island it's going to be still be red and covered uh the big one i'm looking forward to is in november where the moon is going to be red for an hour and a half but you have to be able to stay up late we're talking midnight to 2 a.m uh, a couple if a lot of people like meteor showers two best meteor showers each year uh, august 11th for the perseids and December 13th for the Geminis. And those are known for fireballs. They have about 100 meteors per hour. Basically, you don't need a telescope, just look up and there it is. That's a picture from the Gemini meteor shower a couple of years ago, pitch black in Kailua, uh, Kahuku. Saw 200 meteors from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I was able to catch one with the uh, camera. That sounds so epic, and I hope to catch some of those at some point during the year. Uh, what are some lessons learned that you can share with our viewers when it comes to running your business? Yeah, just be, you gotta love what you do. And that's what I kind of found out. Um, been, it's been a roller coaster for sure during the pandemic. Things open up, shut down, open up, shut down, and it's quite frustrating. So we just kind of have to reset. And one thing I love about the looking in the universe, it really puts things in perspective and you just kind of reset. And you know what? Eventually this is gonna be passed, uh, but work hard. And if you love what you do, if you believe in your product, it's gonna work out eventually.
Thanks, Nick. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, we have some uh, great upcoming events. So we'll be at the uh, International Marketplace every second and fourth Wednesday throughout the year. Our next event at the um, Royal Hawaiian Center is this coming Monday, looking at the moon. And we'll also be at Kapuhu Shopping Center on the 15th. And I've heard they're going to bring out an Easter bunny at the same time, too. That's awesome. And we've already pulled it up. That was your website. So how can people contact you? Yeah, they can contact me either way through the website. Uh, you can call me, Instagram. It all goes to my phone. We'll set up a, a, an event, talk about it, depending on what you want to do. Uh, big groups, small groups, birthday parties, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, anything under the uh, night sky, we, we can make an event under and contact me. We'll talk about it and we'll make sure it's a fun night for your group. Thank you, Nick. And what, the one thing that you had mentioned to me, because I had proposed it to you before, was can we get a telescope on a boat? And you said, well, not the best idea. <laughs> wanted to I throw that out there. To. I wish I could, but unfortunately, the boat rocks. <laughs> but thank you for, uh, for being on the show today. Really appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Um, if people need or would like more info, they can visit stargazersofhawaii.com. Thank you again, Nick, for coming on the show. And thank you to Jay Fidel and the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii for making programs like this possible. We had Michael and Haley who helped us out today on the show. So until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.